Well, here I am in another beautiful place with another car and on another adventure. This area is called the Waterberg. We've traveled about uh, 200 kilometers north of the metropolis of Johannesburg in Pretoria. And this is true bushveld. And what we're going to do now is kind of head that way, which is north, and see what we can find. Now you must forgive me if during this trip I tend to tilt the camera up. It's because of the skies. This part of the world, the skies are absolutely glorious. This adventure is all about taking some of the most sophisticated four-wheel drives yet made into a very unsophisticated area called Waterberg. It's bushveld, mountainous terrain, a lot of game farms, a very unpopulated area, not remote but just unpopulated, very beautiful area. And we're going to be experimenting with a few different ways of enjoying the wilderness. My idea is that we will not be roughing it. Well, we'll have to rough it a bit because we are going to be in remote areas, but some of the lodges here are absolutely gorgeous. And there are also some very interesting conservation projects happening in the area. And I've been invited to go and find out more about them. The two vehicles that we are driving, this one is Land Cruiser 200 diesel V8. I'm pulling a very, very large caravan. I've not been caravanning before. Well, I have. I was seven. I can't really remember too much about it. So I'm going caravanning in some wild areas. The other vehicle is the brand new Toyota Prado. Both of these vehicles are very sophisticated four-wheel drives. And this is the kind of vehicle that is actually quite difficult to engineer and build because they've got to do lots of things really, really well. And this is one of them, long distance travel. And then we're going to get into some very rough terrain and they're going to have to perform well pulling these trailers. test a four-wheel drive vehicle, particularly something like this, which is a station wagon, which will definitely spend 90% of its time on road. How do you test it properly? Well, you've got to take it off-road because this is a vehicle has a dual personality. It's expected to do well off-road. It's a real off-roader. But it, because it'll spend so much of its time on road, in this particular case, I'm going to try and see how good this vehicle is on road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to a racetrack. But, before testing it on the racetrack, I'm going to get a little bit of training on some high-speed performance driving. Every eight or so years, every major motor manufacturer will come up with new models of old tried and tested designs. Four-wheel drive is no different. Toyota is no different. And this is their latest manifestation in the form of the Land Cruiser Prado. Now, Land Cruiser means it's an off-roader. Prado means it's really good in town. So I brought it to a Grand Prix racetrack to test it. So why we brought it to a racetrack? Well, you know, if you think about it, a four-wheel drive vehicles, this is the most difficult to build. It's the most difficult to engineer. It's easy building a load-carrying four-wheel drive because you've got four-wheel drive, heavy springs, and its primary job is to carry a load. Everything else comes second. 
With a vehicle like this, well, what is the most important part of this vehicle? Off-road? Well, not really. On-road? Not necessarily. High speed and performance? Maybe, but not really. You see, there's n the design criteria are so broad. This is the broadest of any four-wheel drive vehicle. And this vehicle is a superb example of modern technology combined with traditional strength. And I want to see how well this modern technology really works. I reckon us blokes, we all reckon that we're pretty good behind the wheel. I know I do. Or to be more precise, I know I did. That was until this morning's driving lesson. My instructor is Jakes Jakobs. He is the equivalent in motoring circles as a test pilot would be to aviators. All right, Andrew. Um, the moment you talk about high performance driving, it's very clear that it's not high speed driving. There's a huge difference between the two. High performance driving, first of all, is 80% mental and 20% physical. The first very important thing is to look ahead. People do not tend to look ahead. The quicker you can identify a corner, the more time you've got to prepare yourself for the corner approaching it. Now, if we look at this next corner, it's a left-hander. We situate the vehicle onto the right-hand side. Then we turn in. We get to what we call the clipping point, which is the closest to the inside of the corner. The moment you get it to that point, that's when you should be able to open up your steering wheel and make use of the available road. It's all a smooth and, and a nice progressive input, especially if we drive a vehicle like this, that's got a little bit of a higher center of gravity. The smoother you go, the more under control the vehicle is and the better performance you will get out of the vehicle. Five laps with Jake's and it's my turn. Don't jump on it, just mm -hmm. and gentle, oh, squeeze on it. Yeah, okay. There we go. Yeah. All right. Little bit more steering angle. That's it. Remember to bend your arms. Don't go with My first arms. mistake are my straight arms. You can't steer properly with straight arms. So I just want to try this thing. So I apply some braking the and then squeeze off it the off the brakes. That's turn the car. Go. There we go. Can you feel it's like dancing? Yeah. That's it. There's plenty of straight on it. All right. Wait for me. It's turning a little bit too early for that one. You can still go in a little bit deeper. Okay. You see, now you can only open up the steering wheel. We want to start Slight. opening this on Early. the clipping point, on the inside of the, of the corner. In okay. other words, we want to make the corner straighter. Yeah. Brakes, that's it. Straight line the car, on the brakes, squeeze it, off the brakes. That's it, turn it in now. Open up the steering, open up, open up. There we go. There we <laughs> go. There we see, go. You don't want to let go, but actually as you, you let go, it, it eases You want to hold it until it's finished with the yeah. corner. Yeah. 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 It's a natural thing. Yeah. It is a natural thing. Yeah. It's something you have to get used to. A little bit deeper into the corner. Now you'll see this corner becomes so oh, much easier. Yes. See what I mean? Take now it goes to I'm the I'm looking inside. at the wrong part of the apex right. of the corner. And now it, remember, not the apex, the clipping point. The apex is halfway through the corner, clipping point two thirds around the corner. Oh, okay. That's the difference. Okay. That's the difference. Right. Turn it in. And open up. Yes, open up. It'll work. Right. Gotta open. look through. Gotta look. Gotta look You've far. Gotta look, gotta look far. Gotta look ahead. If you don't do that, you'll never get it right. It's all very well playing with these vehicles and trailers on a racetrack. But what about the real world? So I brought the Prado here with a heavy trailer to see how it performs in an environment that is actually very hostile to traction and grip. Again, Jakes is going to teach me something. Prado is equipped with stability control. Jakes shows me first what the Prado does with it switched off. First oversteer. Now understeer. Now it's my turn. This is so much fun. Now with stability control turned on. It takes all the fun out of it. As I accelerate, trying to go faster, 
so the system keeps the vehicle straight and in doing so it slows it down to a point where the tyres grip again. It's just no fun at all. Prado also has a trailer stabilising system. Time to push it to its limit. Amazing. The moment the trailer steps out, stability control kicks in and the trailer gets back into line. It's astonishing how well it works. Jax, it's obviously the car's working very well and the stability control's working very well, but surely there's a limit here. Um, Andrew, very much so. And, and I think this is something that we need to emphasize um, that people must understand. All these electronic systems are there for purely in an emergency. It is not something to rely on to say, I've got these systems in the car. Instead of going around this corner at 100 kilometers an hour, I'll now do it at 120 and the car will assist me. Bear in mind that it's all traction dependent. So if you're on a smooth surface or your speed is too high and there's not sufficient traction between the tire and the road, the system becomes null and void. And then the laws of physics takes over and then you are in trouble because it will then not help you. So it's got limitations, it's there for emergency, but it's not something to rely on. It has got their limitations. Jake's wants to try something. Right, here's the idea. He's going to hit the brakes at the first cone to see if he can stop by the second cone. Now here's the plan. Do you think it'll be longer with a big trailer behind it or shorter? So it, was a, it was a little bit further but not much. What you must bear in mind is there's additional weight and because of the overrun coupling that we've got on the caravan, it takes a while for the vehicle to actually activate it and then the combination will start to break. Hence the little bit of further uh, stopping distance that we achieved here. But if the combination is set up correct, all the brakes are working perfectly, you can see our stopping distance is not that further very than on a solo vehicle. Very similar. Very much so. This, uh this area is just so beautiful, it's just exquisite and they've obviously had good rains because the bush is lush and green. This is leopard country, real leopard country. There's some conservation problems though in the area with leopard in that uh, there are a lot of farms and a lot of game farms. At the farms, leopards are causing problems and the farmers are shooting or trapping leopards because they are such problematical animals. We're visiting a conservation project in the area. I understand that relocates problem leopards. And that's where we're going to now. I figure that there are two sides to four-wheel driving and off-road fun. One of them is roughing it, finding amazing places, being alone. And the other, well, it sounds exactly the same. But the tents have stone walls, thatched roofs, and there are wooden walkways. Beautifully manicured lawns and lovely food served in comfortable dining rooms. Hyena, this is my room. Very appropriate name for my room, actually. I was once chased by a hyena, so it's Perfect. Oh wow. Well. What a beautiful room. Ah, but I, I figure there's, there's just one thing missing. My wife. She should be here. Oh. Yes, I'm sure we'll put up with this for a while. Thank you for watching. If you would like to take our relationship to the next level, support me on Patreon. Just $1 a month to support our video productions. Download everything I've ever made and watch them on the big screen on forexoverland.com. Or subscribe now on YouTube.